Hello. Welcome to Shaky Berries. Come on, James. Muffy, say hello. Hello. And Mooney. They're all here today. And we're glad you could join us. But today we're going to look at a poem about plants, seeds, and maybe maybe more. Maybe more. So I'm I'm not very good at seeds. I'm not very good at growing plants really. That's about all I can do. But I, I guess tea is a happy plant. Tea is a happy plant. So if you have some tea, make friends with it. Make friends with your tea. Put on hot water into your teapot. Make it nice and warm. Like that. Then smell your tea leaves. Let them know you. Let you know them. And put them into your hot teapot. And look. Careful. 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 Right. Now, as it gets warm, it gets more taste out. You know. Warm it, wake it up a little bit. So that's the only kind of uh, plant communication I'm good at. Let's see, well, I'm not an expert. I really like my tea. You should like your tea, whatever you're having tea or coffee or light. And there we go. Now we have some good tea here. Ah, smells absolutely divine. Okay, so today it's a poem, The Seed Shop by Muriel Stewart. And the note says that uh, she was so much in love with plants and seeds and gardening that eventually she stopped writing poetry, as in poetry, and she started writing books about gardening, which is amazing, because that's where her heart lay, uh, that's how her heart is singing. So let's read it. You should have your copy, either on your screen or print it out. Let's, uh, let's read it aloud, let's see if it sings or if it just speaks. The Seed Shop by Muriel Stewart. With me, yeah? Here in a quiet and dusty room they lie, faded as crumbled stone and shifting sand, forlorn as ashes, shriveled, scentless, dry. Metals and gardens running through my hand. Dead that shall quicken at the voice of spring, Slippers to wake beneath June's tempest kiss, Though birds pass over unremembering, And no bee find here roses that were his. In this brown husk a dale of hawthorn dreams, A cedar in this narrow cell is thrust, That shall drink deeply at the century's streams. This lily shall make summer on my dust. Here in their safe and simple house of death, sealed in their shells, a million roses leap. Here I can steer a garden with my breath, and in my hand a forest lies asleep. Mm. What a fantastic little poem, isn't it? Oh, I really love it. I appreciate it. I love it, love it, love it, love it. 
yeah, not bad. Very interesting. Some in some good points in here. Yes. So our first question is usual. How do we feel about it? Do we feel it's interesting? Do we, do we feel like it's boring? Do we like more action? Or do we like being lyrical? And do we like this anticipation? Mm -hmm. A bit of both, maybe. Well, I like it because it's beautiful. It tells you about dreams and how they sleep, but uh, they they will wake and then they will be amazing. But just now, at this moment, you can see they are tiny, tiny, and they seem to be dead. But really, it's not true. They are dead and tiny, but they are big and alive. Crazy, what a paradox. Yes. Ah, very good. What do you think? Oh, okay. She says she's sleeping. She, she represents the sleeping beauty today, I guess. Okay. Let's just feel it for a moment, how it represents ourselves, which is why we can read it and talk about it. Right, so the seed shop, and it's uh, it's very interesting because uh, why seed shop? Why not just uh, a, a room with seeds? I think because if it's a seed shop, then you have hello, you have lots and lots and lots of seeds more than one person might uh, have so it means there's uh, only uh, it's only 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 seeds lots and lots and lots of seeds and nothing else just specifically a place for seeds it's their reality it belongs to them they are the masters of this reality the seeds also also i get I guess it means that if it's a shop, then uh, the seeds are for sale. So whoever comes to the shop, it's not their seeds, though potentially they might be. And whoever runs the shop, uh, they're not his because uh, they're or hers, because uh, they're his or hers to, to, to sell, to be sold. If you know what I mean. So it's it's a, a transitory place in between in between. It's not in the garden, not in the ground where they would be growing. Or they do not strictly belong to anyone. They don't have a place yet. Oh, I know. It's souls. It's souls before they're born, waiting their turn. Oh, thank you, Muffy. That's an interesting idea. Uh, do you do you think Muffy's right? Does anyone agree? Ah, uh, hope so. If you might. Mm -hmm. Yes. So seed shop means a variety and it means uh, transit, being in transit. They don't know where they are going to end up, if they are just now at the shop. Maybe someone will buy them, maybe no one would buy them, they'll just die there, because the seeds can live for a long time, but oh, they're not immortal. Did you know there was an amazing story just recently about scientists growing a fig tree, a palm tree of sorts, from a seed that was more than 2,000 years old from the Dead Sea. They found it at the Dead Sea. Ah, amazing. And they could they could wake it. They could grow a whole tree and, uh, and not one tree, many trees. Yeah, but it's a bit uh, extraordinary. 
It doesn't usually happen. But still, most seeds can't lie there indefinitely. And uh, they only have uh, maybe a year or two or five or ten or a uh, hundred, but there's still a limited time to, to grow. So maybe they will never grow. Maybe someone who buys them will be a bit like me, who doesn't know next thing about gardening or uh, knows some theory but uh, can't do it in practice. And they'll have uh, not much luck. Or maybe, maybe it will be someone like Muriel here, our beautiful friend Muriel. Hello, Muriel. Uh, who knows all about gardening, not just knows, but it's her spirit, her heart. Uh, she knows it directly, so it's not a theory, but uh, a feeling for her. And then, and then the seeds will be really happy. But as they lie there at the seed shop, uh, they are really in transit. They have no idea what will happen to them next. And do they care? Do they care? Maybe they don't care. Maybe they're happy just to be uh, all self-sufficient uh, little universes with that potential in them. In you? In me? <laughs> right. So here we enter the seed shop. So by choosing to read the poem, uh, the poem is called The Seed Shop. If we choose to read the poem, we choose to enter the seed shop. Ah, why? Why? Because we are gardeners. Our life is our garden. What we do in our life is our little garden, which can grow wild, but it can grow beautiful, can be anything you want it to be. And of course, each time we talk about plants and gardening, as opposed to wild plants, of course, of course, we think about the Garden of Eden, a heaven, paradise. That's what we think. Ah, so our reality is a garden, but how, what, how do we populate the garden? We need some sh seeds, and where do we get seeds? We get them in the seed shop. So in that case, the seed shop is a very magical place, a metaphysical, we might say. So the seed shop is where you can find gold, because only gold can give you the seeds to plant in your life. Okay, let's have it. Here in a quiet and dusty room they lie. So uh, we enter, we enter the poem, we enter this uh, world, and what do we see? Immediately we are in a quiet and dusty room. How do we feel about it? Do we like to be in a quiet, dusty room? Uh, no, I'm allergic to dust, so I don't like it. Well, obviously it means that no one is really much interested in that place. Uh, if it's quiet, it means uh, there aren't any people, or not many people, maybe just the shopkeeper. Maybe just you. We, we don't see the shopkeeper here. We only see the, uh, the, the narrator narrator uh, who tells the story let's say uh, let's say it's muriel if, if, to, to make it a bit easier uh, let's say it's we only see muriel maybe she's the shopkeeper and no one comes to her in her shop because we don't see any other person I I in this space so we assume there is no one else we can only see uh, what is shown to us in the poem and the reality we enter uh, consists only of what uh, is described in the poem or hinted. So, uh, as we look at it, apparently there's no one else. Uh, maybe she's a customer, but uh, the shopkeeper is away. Anyway, sh she is in charge now just by being the only uh, person there apart from the sleeping seeds. 
So no one is interested. Uh, people think it's boring, it's awful, it's uh, not worth uh, looking at. And thus it's dusty. It goes both ways, you see. Because if people are not interested in the place, then place grows disinterested in people. It would be nice and tidy if, if they had lots of customers coming, going, uh, thinking about their reputation, you know, the face and thing. Uh, but as no one comes, they, they don't bother, I guess. Uh, as whoever is in that shop, let's say Muriel, uh, she feels more affinity with the seeds than with people. So seeds like dust. Uh, because dust is, is like earth, in a silly way. Uh, people don't like dust. No, because they can be allergic to it. Like me. Yeah. And because it's dirty. Yes. And because nobody likes dust anyway. Yes. So, here in a quiet and dusty room, they lie. Uh, already we have that air, that the feeling, sensation of, of what? Loneliness? Uh, maybe not. Uh, maybe a separation, seclusion, maybe. What do you think? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. uh, the room itself is like a big seed. Just now it's quiet and dusty, but uh, potentially it, it can become alive. Maybe it's just not the season. Maybe it's a low season, maybe it's not the right season for people to come and buy seeds too early or too late, somewhere between the right times to keep. Okay, well that's a magical place because it's isolated. All isolated places are magical, like, uh, well, you know, you know, like caves, uh, forests, deserts. Seed shops, out of season. Now, you don't have the noise there. You just have yourself and you can hear yourself very clearly in it. So quiet, dusty, they lie. All very passive. We love action. There's no action. What a boring poem. Let's throw it away. Let's read about. Ah, big heroes with big swords, yeah! No, it's meditative, that's shamanic, let's, let's keep, let's keep with it. Okay, so who is it who lies there? They, they, and uh, we assume it's seeds, because it's called a seed shop. But of course, if you didn't have the, uh, the title, it would be a, a, a bit strange. A bit strange. Who they? Faded as crumbled stone and shifting sand. Forlorn as ashes, shriveled, scentless, dry. Ah, just uh, feel the music in it. Feel the music of the sound. If you have not read it aloud yet with me, you should pause uh, and read it and feel it on your tongue. Uh, feel the beauty of it. Faded, forlorn. So again, you look at them and uh, every word describing them tells you they're dead boring, nothing much to look at, a faded uh, going out of existence, a scrambled stone for a stone to crumble. Ah, ah. Mm, the stone must be really old or exposed or old and exposed to get crumbled. Again, uh, an image of destruction, a stone as something durable, uh, something, uh, you may say forever, because uh, stones live longer than humans, mainly, usually. But here, it's the end of times, everything falls apart. 
everything fades out of existence. And shifting sand. So stone crumbles and the crumble of stone is called sand. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Sand is not just the uh, crumbled stone. There's lots of little funny things in it. But uh, just, just uh, as we see it, uh, from a big stone to sand, dust, and sand is like little stone, uh, like little seeds. Yeah. Have you seen? I don't know, carrot seeds, something like that. A lot of seeds which look just like uh, ashes, just like sand, and that is what she can see here. Or someone who looks at it, he say, oh well, it's just a little crumbled stones, it's just sand, it's just ashes, it's dead, it's nothing. So if you think about the seed, usually if you're not into gardening, you imagine something like this something big or, or even, even like uh, this like an avocado seed or I don't know what a peach seed something but if you're into gardening you know that really most seeds look really really tiny so they can fly away they can go anywhere they like so the magic is to stop and to look closer and closer until something tiny becomes something uh, as big as the whole universe. So cr not just stone, but crumbled stone. Not just sand, but shifting sand. Shifting sand. Shifting sand. Uh, so shifting sand again is something uh, tricky. Something uh, that might be deadly, even something unstable. Again, moving a stone, not just sitting but falling apart. Sand, not just lying there, but again going somewhere, giving way. Forlorn as ashes, faded, forlorn. What are you doing there? And uh, again, of course, of course, every time we see an image of something we talk about ourselves yes Mimi I got it I got it so um, each time when you feel faded and forlorn you feel like ah oh, what is my life about what is my life about I'm just miserable ah oh! oh. No one loves me, no one remembers me, my time is passing, fading away. Well, maybe it should just cheer up a little bit, because uh, there can always be uh, something next, and next, and next, and that's how we keep ourselves alive, by moving and shifting. Forlorn as ashes. Um, but just uh, think about it. Uh, we can understand faded as a crumbled stone. So the stone is there out in all weathers, gets crumbled, gets discolored. Okay, how about forlorn as ashes? Mm. It's like what? You write this? Mm -hmm. Good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, forlorn as ashes, you die, and who remembers you? No one remembers you. Maybe, maybe your friends, maybe your family, if you have friends or family. Uh, then what? Ten years? Twenty years? 50 years, who cares about someone they never seen? Who cares about some dead person? Ah, ashes, ashes, all goes back to ashes. Shriveled, scentless, or senseless, if we talk about people, yeah? 
we talk about ourselves senseless dry so uh, with the feeling of desolation of death and then meadows and gardens run through my hand so she can see it she can see meadows and gardens in in forlorn ashes and shifting sand she has a vision she has a uh, sympathy empathy yeah she knows that no matter how forlorn and faded you may feel at the moment really inside you there's that paradise meadows gardens so again we we'll, we go down emotionally we go down down like, uh, and as we reach our bottom sandless dry sudden it explodes it opens up to us and we see meadows and gardens and when you say that when you see it you see uh, from the ashes you, you've just been seeing ashes tiny little ashes uh, and you, it's like you you look down and your face gets closer and closer as you look closer and closer as you read the poem and then it goes up into your face opens up all the big green space lush and uh, what have you there flowers and uh, plants in general and trees and grasses all coming from from that little speck of dust and uh, that's how it happens in people what do we know what do we know how big we are how small we are we are tiny we are amazing we are nothing we are everything running through my hand so uh, again she she can anticipate it she can see future in present or better yet we can say she can uh, take us out of linear time and to show how uh, those ashes are at the same time meadows and gardens and you can hold them in your hand or they can run through your hand again running through my hand uh, she's not trying to hold it she's not trying to own it uh, she lets it go or maybe it means uh, that you can't hold a life it loses and uh, it, it passes you by a little bit maybe it's like time oh oh interesting thank you commander james that's an interesting idea mm. or maybe 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 it's like uh you being responsible if it uh, comes through your hand you touch it you hold it in your hand means you are responsible your hands are responsible uh, for it to grow and to really become metals rather than staying ashes because if you, if you just leave it there at this shop and you do nothing they won't grow they need well the least they need is uh, some soil and water and sunlight and love and care you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, gardening is different from wild nature. Precisely. Hello. Ah. Oh, precisely. Ah. Oh, precisely. Ah. Oh. I'll oh, stop doing it. It's silly. Oh, sorry. Just uh, playing with my friend Muni here. Precisely because uh, it takes your attention and care and energy you need to work it doesn't just happen so if you feel like your ashes are in ashes then 
to make it into a garden. It's more than possible. It's supposed to happen, but you you should you should feel and take the responsibility for yourself for for your ashes, and then there'll be meadows and gardens, and you'll be happy. I agree. Yes. In this case, I agree. Yes. Oh, thank you, Commander. Oh, nothing, nothing. What? What a sly face. Ah. You can't see cautiously. Maybe I can show you that sly face on the skin of the cat. Or maybe you can't, maybe I can't. Can you see that face? No, you can't see that face. It's too far. Oh well. she is sorry because she feels like no one is going to come to the shop and revive them and then all that magic all that potential oh thank you very nice view they're watching you you know everyone's watching you oh, what can you do with her and uh then all that potential just runs through your hands and you can't keep it, you can't save it you can only feel what will never happen you can feel the alternative timeline but you can't make it true unless someone, some customer who knows what he's doing or she is doing really comes and asks for something but Right, so the first stanza is desolation with a little outburst of life in the end, otherwise it would be just too depressing, I guess. Right. Dead that shall quicken as the voice of spring. Ah, slippers to wake beneath June's tempest kiss. Thank you, Mooney. Very nice. Which is uh, more or less the same uh, idea. Because we know to, to die, to sleep, that's more or less uh, the same in poetry. That that will come alive in spring. And the sleepers uh, will wake in June. Ah! So first they are dead, or seemingly dead, the voice of spring awakes them. Again, if you're religious, you can say, oh, the voice of spring is like a voice of God at the end of times, when all dead come alive. Or you may just say, oh, maybe spring... What? Yeah, I was just saying, uh, maybe spring is like... Uh, the goddess of life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, yeah it, it's, it's more or less the same idea, really. Whichever way you look at it. <sighs> Quick and the voice of spring. So it's the voice which wakes them. Which is interesting, because if you th think about plants, it's not the voice uh, they wake up to. Obviously, it's... Oh, well, not obviously. Uh, you, you feel about mm, temperature, sunlight, water... I guess mainly temperature that uh, they wake to. But here it's the voice of spring, because we're not talking just about uh, mathematics of seeds. We talk about a poetry of life. We hear a voice of uh, renewal and, um, and we become alive, but we are still asleep. To hear the voice is just to make us alive again, but still asleep. And next line, slippers. First line, dead. Next line, slippers. Slippers to wake. Uh, finally, 
wake beneath June's tempest kiss. So, uh, what is it? What is it? Why kiss? Why this imagery? Voice a kiss? Because it's romantic. We love romantic. We really, really love romantic. We love. Oh, thank you. We love kisses. We love a beautiful voice waking us to a bright new life. Something happy? Yes? Uh, yes. Mm. And not just a kiss, but a uh, tempest kiss. Oh, crazy, crazy. Why tempest kiss? On one hand, it's a kiss. On another, it's connected with a tempest. Shakespeare. Yeah, I know, Kramanda, you see Shakespeare everywhere. Well, Tempest is a love story, isn't it? Well, it is, so what? Uh, well, just saying. Okay. <sighs> well, it's something, uh, uh, the voice of spring is passive and, uh, Oh, the, ki the Tempest Kiss of June is more active. It's like, you, you can't avoid it. It's like a, a, an alarm clock, which you may ignore, or a bucket of cold water on your head, which you can hardly ignore. So they seem to be dead, but uh, there's magic coming to them. Again, they don't do anything as such but there is magic of life coming to wake them coming to them to help them and they only need to respond and it's hard not to anyway though birds pass over unremembering ah oh, what a beautiful line you can see birds pass over unremembering again you may say maybe it's uh, about people uh, you, you, you've been through uh, a difficult situation you, you thought you were dying you thought you were fading and forlorn and then you find a new power which helps you come back which helps you to renew yourself to be alive again and then of course you're a new person if you come through that and you're alive again you are a new person and then the people pass over and remembering they're like who is that person i don't know someone and they don't remember or they don't care uh, talking to you before or uh, no having known you because uh, they're busy with their own lives which is good natural maybe the birds pass over unremembering. Unremembering. So you come back to the same world, but the world doesn't recognize you because you are not the same. But it doesn't matter. Though birds pass over, so what? But it's a, it's just an interesting detail you should be ready for. Like if someone decides to go to the monastery, for instance, and all his or her friends and girls are like, ah, oh, you crazy girl, or boy, or someone, cat. And no bee find here roses that were his. Oh, romance again, ah, oh. yeah. Birds, bees. On one hand, she she loves her nature and she can talk about birds and bees, just as birds and bees. But at the same time, we feel that uh, th there's much more to it than just birds and bees, because birds pass over and remembering just uh, somewhere some big people. But a bee, uh, a bee has a more intimate connection. To flowers. Birds can live in big flowers. 
Yes, but uh, you don't really think about it, do you? Not here. Well, maybe not. Oops. Uh, bees have more intimate connection with flowers, so... And roses. We have roses and were his. Very interesting, because a bee is uh, an it. Or a bee is a she. Technically, bees are girls. Yes, thank you. Well, isn't it right? Yeah, it's right, but in poetry we don't care about biology. Oh, sorry. Oh, maybe we do care. But here, uh, a bee, obviously, again, is like a, a lover. He, rose, love, lover. So, as you come back, not only your friends may not uh, want to talk to you again but you are a new person now uh, and uh, someone who thought I was in love with you uh, can't see you you are not his yeah no be find here roses that were his Yeah, because you live it in your old life before, and now you have your freedom, your absolute freedom from all old connections, including love connections. So now you're not interested in what used to be. Maybe you are, maybe you're not, but are they not interested in you? Because uh, uh, the person they felt. Uh, connected with was someone completely different than you as you are now is it good is it bad is it uh, moonshine what do you say maybe you have s uh, another idea of uh, what this might mean yeah so we have the connection we have on one hand, uh, the keys of magic, the keys of power, of uh, a life force which brings you back fully to life, which has nothing to do with uh, uh, romantic connections. It's something uh, very different and much, much more powerful. On one hand, you have that. On another hand, you have... Uh, just a, a lover from from past life, no, not be fine the heroes that were his. If we assume it's about uh, love, uh, because it's it's not true love anyway. It wasn't true love between a bee and a rose. How can there be true love between a bee and a rose anyway? They're different. Okay, right. Yes, I'm listening, I'm listening to your ideas. You can put them in the comments somewhere. It would be good, It'd be lovely. Mm -hmm. So now we we are out. The first stanza we were sitting inside that dusty room. And now we have a vision of what might happen in future and in that vision we leave this little dusty room and we find ourselves in the big world with uh, the tempest, with the birds, with the bees. It's open, it's big, it's full of air. Because when you say tempest kiss, when you say birds pass over, when you talk about bees, you think about flying. And uh, you think about flying, so you think about a big space uh, overhead, uh, lots of air and freshness. So uh, it's a, a, a very good uh, contrast to the first stanza. Because we don't want to, to die in that little room. We need some air. We can't breathe that dust and sand and ashes. Ugh. And then... Uh, now uh, we are revitalized, uh, we, we come back, we can look at it in a more 
a healthy uh, way because now we we kind of uh, have it balanced partly we are at uh, the uh, dusty room and partly we are out in the garden in open space and uh, what we see next uh, about uh, describing different seeds it, it can be uh, either here or there or uh, neither here nor there doesn't matter we, we look at those seeds we take them out of reality Poom. 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 we let them float in infinity and show all their essence all their potential shining through so it's like we take one seed and we say in this brown husk a dale of hawthorn dreams so again we have one husk but inside what is potentially hawthorn uh, enough to fill a whole dale and it's dreaming a dale dreams Again, listen to the music. Listen to the music. Sometimes music is more important than words. And in poetry, it's always at least as important as words. I know, I know. Words are important too. But the music is, 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 is magic. <laughs> in this brown husk, so she can show us how the seeds are all different. Because if you talk to a normal person who is not a gardener, uh, you say a seed. And say, ah, oh, well, something. But now we can see specific seeds and we can see they're all different. Like all people are different. So all seeds are different. And again, something small contains potentially something great and big. And of course we have specific names here, so we can smell it, we can see it. Uh, Hawthorn is uh, something more, uh, quite uh, common uh, in, in Britain. And then we have Seda. And what connections do we have with uh, Seda? So if Hawthorn thorns, uh, something uh, low, maybe rural, simple, you tell me, um, something you, you can see a lot. And then uh, next, uh, uh, again, Hawthorn dreams said that. So they come uh, one after another. We don't have a big break between uh, the two words. So Hawthorne becomes a Seda. And Seda is... Oh, Seda is a noble tree from the Bible. And uh, it's cool. And they really love it. And uh, they sing songs about it because it's an amazing big tree. And uh, yeah, it's posh, but maybe not posh as such, but yeah, it's important. Now we, uh, we are uh, taken from our uh, mundane everyday reality where we can see whole thorn, like simple people, you may say normal people. Uh, then we see a seda, uh, maybe a seda is like uh, a poet or a prophet. I guess all poets are prophets in the sense that a prophet is someone who who doesn't speak to you from him or herself but uh, he or she tells you what a uh, god or the universe or wh whatever you call it uh, really doesn't matter uh, tells them to tell you so I guess all poets are prophets so um, you look at this person and uh, he's a good working person, like Hawthorne. And you look at that seed of a person, and maybe he's uh, an artist. So we're not saying that Seda is better than Hawthorne, or Hawthorne is better than Seda. They're just different. And uh, they dream, and they, they wait, and they're amazing. Each one is amazing.
Seda in this narrow cell is frost that shall drink deeply at the centuries streams. Again, a Hawthorne. How long does a Hawthorne live? I'm not sure. But a Seda's can live for uh, ages and ages and ages. I, I think. At least they're magical trees, and you, you do see them a lot in the Bible. A narrow cell, so again, a different kind of uh, shell. Cell, shell. Sh cell, shell, drink. Do you hear it? Do you hear it? A cell that shall. Seda, cell, shell. And then drink deeply, and then center streams. Said a cell shall center streams. You can hear it. So now we have a kind of water, but maybe it's not really water. Because what, what, what does it mean to drink deeply at uh, center streams? What's your ideas about it? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh, maybe it's uh, uh, th maybe it says that if you're a poet, a prophet, an artist, uh, a philosopher, whatever, uh, then you you drink deeply. Uh, meaning you go deeply. You don't just uh, come to to your time superficially. You really try to understand your time and what is going on in your society and uh, in your life and in your universe in your culture the center is streams so what makes your center what it is what are the processes and a poet a philosopher an artist uh, they go deep into it and they're like said of they smell nice. What did you say? I said they smell nice. Uh, well, maybe. But they work too. That's why they stay. Uh, okay. And uh, if they're good at it, then uh, they, they are like said that they can be around us for a long time. Okay. So, uh, we have different uh, kinds of people. We have brown half, maybe brown like uh, uh, if you work outside, your skin gets a bit uh, brown in, in the weather. And if you sit indoors, you're all white and pale. Maybe uh, that's it. Well, maybe, maybe. I didn't know. Ooh. And again, a Hawthorne is presented as a Dale of Hawthorne, so uh, you can see it's a lot of them, of these, uh, what are they, bushes, trees? And uh, again, you think about working people. And a seda is singular, because you don't have many great thinkers in each century. You'd be uh, lucky if you have one or two these days. We're not just trying to show off, but uh, who really go into it, who really drink deeply from the center streams. And what is the stream? What? 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 It's a stream of uh, information, like an energy stream or a data stream, which constructs our reality. Oh, you're very technical, Commander James. I would be. I have a spaceship and I pilot it myself. Oh, yeah, you would know. You would know. Wow. So on. And then we have lilies. Oh, oh. Can you feel it? Can you feel how much we, we, we get from here? It's amazing, amazing. So lilies again are biblical flowers. So what do we know about lilies? 
uh, they are happy because uh, uh, lilies don't have to work. Uh, they represent sadness, uh, maybe sometimes, because they have a very heavy smell. Uh, lilies are white lilies are for purity. But anyway, uh, sad is a uh, uh, let's I think it's a male uh, image and a lily is definitely female image lily cheek or something rosy cheek and lily brow so lilies are beautiful and uh, who is that? someone under the table ah! oh that's another cat should have known so um, uh, lilies who are lilies who are lilies maybe girls maybe happy girls maybe lilies like uh, happy girls who who became nuns i know maybe lilies what yeah yeah please please tell me yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe it's about uh, like spirit. So uh, a Dale of Hawthorne is about uh, manual labor. Uh, Seda is about mental labor. Then lilies are like uh, spiritual labor. Maybe, maybe. These lilies shall make summer on my dust. Oh. Make summer on my dust. What does she mean to say? Oh, so we had a uh, voice of spring, we had uh, June, which is uh, the beginning of summer. Now we have summer. Well, the year progresses naturally in the poem. Good. But on my dust. And a dusty room at the beginning, and uh, on my dust here. On my dust meaning what? Meaning uh, where I plant them, or meaning on my grave. I will die, but the lilies will grow on and on. Is that what she wants to tell us? And uh, when you are dead and turned into dust, it won't be uh, horrible because you have lilies and they will bring you joy when you say summer you think about uh, happiness yeah winter is bad and summer is good we know that we know that it's uh, intuitive oh dear oh dear so of all uh, plants trees bushes grasses uh, she chooses uh, this free well, four if you if you count roses. Hawthorn, Seda, and lilies. So, uh, in a way, we have our universe in the poem. In the the, the, the universe of the poem has three uh, forces or three parts. That's interesting because uh, sometimes you have one force. Sometimes you have uh, two forces, which is usually the most common picture we see. Maybe because we have two halves of brain, maybe that's why we like to make uh, uh, two-sided pictures. But here, very interesting, we have three or four uh, sides. Ah, ah, very interesting. Your comment? No comment. Yes comment. Hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's move to the last stanza here. It's an amazing poem. It's uh, how you read it, how you hear it, how it comes from you. You can hear the music as you read it. You can hear the uh, layer after layer 
and less, uh, you have the layer of normality, where you can read it just as a poem about gardening. Why not? And there's another layer which uh, opens up the, uh, the universe, shows you the mapping of, uh, of reality, the mapping of a person, of you, me, according to that uh, poem. So the last bit. Here, in their safe and simple house of death, ah yeah, so roses are the fourth uh, power. We have four powers in, in this reality. And uh, roses, I guess it's like love, like real love. So we have uh, working, thinking, uh, spiriting and love. Okay, here in the safe and simple, so in the beginning we had quiet and dusty, the uh, environment was quiet and dusty, we didn't like it, like, ah, dirty, yeah, hush it, oh, bless you, uh, now it becomes safe and simple, okay, that's better, house of death, but we know uh, the house of death isn't really a house of death, Maybe it's about a body which gets decomposed as the, the shell of the seed gets decomposed and then all the potential which is, well, in our case infinite, all our infinite potential gets released if we uh, answer the voice of spring and follow the tempest case of June, maybe. So your body, in a way, is a house of death because it's bound, it's doomed, it's uh, blessed to die sooner or later. Uh, but uh, you must not be afraid, even if you feel faded and forlorn. Maybe it's about old people, uh, sad as it is, maybe. Uh, you shouldn't be afraid because it's not the end, it's the beginning. You remember John Barleycorn the other time, yeah? So, but while we are here, it's not just a house of death, it's a house of life too, of course. We must remember it, we must make friends with our body. Even if the body is destined to decompose sooner or later, it doesn't have to be sooner. A, it doesn't have to be sooner. B, uh, it doesn't have to be awful. I mean, look at uh, all those, uh, uh, I know, uh, uh, Chinese monks. Uh, they can live for a very, very long time and uh, uh, just to the uh, last moment uh, they are healthy and happy and uh, have a clear mind. So even if the body is destined to decompose, which we know is true, it doesn't mean that it has to happen soon. It can happen in, well, a normal lifespan for a person is 200 years. I have it on authority. It's uh, Commander James told me, and he knows. I know I have a spaceship. I've seen all of it, believe me. Yeah, thank you. So a normal lifespan of a person is 200 years. It, it depends on us, how we treat our body whether we get there or not, and it depends entirely on how we treat our body, whether we uh, arrive in a broken vehicle or in a uh, healthy house, so to say. Yeah, It's supposed to be healthy and uh, thinking clearly and happy and living for 200 years uh, approximately, maybe some more, maybe some less. So approximately 200 years, uh, just so you know. Whew. But ultimately we need to remember that even if it takes 200 years, still it's a house of death, but a house of life too. So that's the other side which we uh, uh, kind of have to keep in mind. Sealed in their shells, a million roses leap. Million roses, can you imagine million roses? How much would it take? Uh, whole street maybe. But if it's in seeds, then it takes very little space. 
Oh. So again, 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 men and roses in little south. He I can steer a garden with my breath, and in my hand a forest lies asleep. So we come back to the narrator. We only saw the narrator have, have very little at the beginning of the first stanza, running through my hand, then we forgot all about uh, the narrator. Now we are back to the narrator. Ah, and now it's very important because if the seed shop is uh, like the workshop of God or goddess, whatever you prefer, I don't care, then the narrator is God and we see it. I can stir a garden with my breath. So we have breath uh, or spirit. Uh, as we have mentioned somewhere before in Hebrew, it's it's the same word ruach, as uh, like uh, wind or like spirit, and it's uh, well grammatically it's uh, feminine, if I'm not mistaken. So um, that person there is godlike. If it's a person, then to the seeds the person is godlike but if we uh, think that seeds are really people and uh, maybe maybe i don't know how much depends on us even a seed which falls to bad soil can grow if it has enough will to grow we've seen lots and lots of examples so it's not a, a it's not a fate, it's not predestined, you can do it, you can change it, you can make your way through, truly, truly. Here I can still garden with my breath. We, we come to the first stanza, we come back to the little shop, to that room after our big journey into infinity. Now we are coming back, we get grounded, a kind of. Uh, here, I can stir, here in a quiet room, uh, here in the safe and simple, here in a quiet and dusty room, house, um, uh, run through my hand, uh, in my hand the forest, uh, meadows and gardens, stir a garden. You see, it's repeating, we come back to the beginning, but it's different. How is it different? Tell me. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't, don't be shy, don't be shy, just, just tell me. Ah, well, maybe, maybe, maybe at first we saw just something dirty and unimportant. Now we realize that each uh, bit, each speck of, of ashes, each uh, grain of sand is really a person, a living person with a whole life, a whole identity you tell me maybe here i can still garden with my breath and in my hand a forest lies asleep ah another connection uh they lie lies asleep yeah mm -hmm. so uh, and now we had meadows we had gardens we had uh, just different uh, plants and now we arrive in the end we see a forest. So forest, as opposed to a garden, is much more powerful because a garden needs some uh, guidance, uh, needs uh, someone to look after it, needs someone to care about it. You remove the gardener and the garden is no more. But the forest, the forest needs no one. The forest was before the gardens, all gardens. The forest can look after itself and it's ancient. And still it lies asleep in, in the narrator's hand, even that. So that 
so I, I uh, we have garden and forest in the last two stanzas. A uh, garden is something uh, uh, domesticated, you may say, maybe, maybe. and the forest is something free and wild and independent. But uh, right at uh, now, at this point, uh, there isn't much difference between the two. They're both in 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 potential state. Yeah, and we. Anticipate it. We feel it, and we can look at it. We can see how the narrator, or I, as I read it, we can hold that power. That uh, entity being in our hand. So uh, gardens are running through my hand, but uh, the forest uh, just uh, stays there and lies asleep like uh, a baby, a, a kitten. I don't know. You, I don't know. Uh, can you imagine holding a forest which is asleep? Isn't it an amazing image? And by uh, again repeating. I stir a garden with my breath. It could be playful, could be destructive. Um, I, I guess it's just a playful here, because she doesn't feel destructive. She loves that place. She loves her seeds. But uh, when again she says, "In my hand, the forest lies asleep," we feel love. We feel care. We feel responsibility. Yeah, as something you hold in your hand and it's a small and uh, sleeping and trusting because uh, otherwise if you were evil you could just crush it in your hand but you don't do it you marvel you look at it and through your hand uh, it can be a hand of attention it doesn't have to be a literal hand through your hand of attention as you hold it you admire it and it can feel it and it's kind of purring in its sleep if a forest can purr uh, in its sleep and then you say yes i'm the gardener i'm responsible and when you take this responsibility magic happens miracle happens So that's your homework, hold the garden and hold the forest in your hands and feel how they trust you, feel how they're asleep but ready to wake up at the slightest notice. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, been nice to see you hope to see you again hope to hear from you hope to see you in real life cheers have some good tea